I was going through my Iceland images that I captured last year and I had processed some of them earlier. But there were few photos that I found a bit boring and didn't quite appeal to me. So I was like, what can I do to transform them? You know what I did, you have read the title, Sky Replacement. Now Sky Replacement is not a new feature, but I didn't use it much before because usually I don't manipulate my images. This time I thought of getting a bit creative and I'm absolutely blown away by how well this feature works. This video is about Sky Replacement, all the small settings you need to change to make it look close to perfect. And also at the end, I will share few secret tips of mine that I usually don't share with anyone else. But since you people have subscribed to the channel, I hope you have. Since you people are so special to me, I will share it with you people. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The basic idea is very simple. Just open the image in Photoshop, go to Edit, Sky Replacement, select the sky you want and you're pretty much done. You can download the sky files from the link in the description below. This already looks very good. The reason I'm so impressed by this feature is because it not only masks the sky and replaces it, but it also adjusts the rest of the image to match the sky. As you can see, the image also got a bit warmer. I would say 90% of the edit is done. This already looks pretty good. The rest 10%, the fine tuning part, that's what we are going to focus now. Let's start from top to bottom. The first slider is shift edge. Basically, this will allow you to shift the clouds up or down. For this one, I think the edge is perfect, so I'm not going to shift it. What Fade Edge does is it controls the transition of the replaced sky. If you take it to zero, it's a bit abrupt and doesn't quite blend with the mountains. So I will increase it a bit till it starts blending nicely. Next is Sky Adjustments. You can adjust the brightness of the sky and as you change it, the overall image is getting affected. If you make the sky darker, the overall image gets darker. I will just reduce the brightness a bit so that it feels like the sunset is about to happen. We are transitioning from golden hour to blue hour and the light is fading out. I'll make the sky a bit cooler. Again, the same reason, as I said, we are transitioning towards the blue hour. You can scale the sky as well. You can even flip it horizontally. For this one, I don't think the flipped one looks good. I'll stick to the original one. These were the sky adjustments. Now we will do foreground adjustments. You can change the lighting mode. This basically changes the blending mode for the lighting adjustments. I always stick to multiply. I haven't used screen for any of my images. For these settings, let me take them to zero. Now, if I turn the preview on and off, you can see the foreground is not getting affected at all because we haven't made any foreground adjustments. I'll start with color adjustments. Since the sky is warm, the overall image will start getting warmer. Edge lighting here is very useful. Let me zoom in the mountains right here to explain. When I increase my edge lighting, the contrast increases and you won't see those halos or artifacts that you normally see around the edges. If I increase the foreground lighting, the mountains will start getting a bit darker and now it's all coming together. I'll click on OK. One of my favorite thing about this feature is when you're done with sky replacement, you don't get a single flat image with the merged sky. You can see all the adjustments in the form of non-destructive layers. Let me show you how useful this is. This is responsible for the warmth and coolness of the sky. You can change it here as well. This here is the actual sky layer. If I command click on the mask, you can see the selection. This group right here is responsible for edge lighting. You can adjust the levels and make minor adjustments. This gives you much more freedom and control than before. But if you're not that comfortable with Photoshop yet, nothing to worry about. The sky replacement UI is very easy to use even for the beginners. This part right here is controlling the foreground lighting. I can click here on the curves layer and I can adjust the curves to make more specific adjustments. I'll reduce the shadows a bit and make the overall image a bit darker. If I turn this on and off, you can see we have made a lot of changes to the image. If you're a beginner, you can just use the sky replacement tool and transform the image 
within few seconds. If you're comfortable with Photoshop levels and curves, that is where you can spend that extra time after replacing the sky and fine tune it to make it look perfect. Instead of using the built-in sky packs by Photoshop every time, what I would recommend is using your own sky images. This will ensure that your images stand out from the rest of the crowd. To do that, click here, get more skies and import images. Now you can import your own sky images. I'm using one of my Northern Lights images for this one. Just some minor curves adjustments and it looks pretty good to me. Now let's say for example, you have an image where the sky is not in focus. Now if you do sky replacement, it won't look real because in this image, the sky is in focus and in the original image, the sky was out of focus. A simple way to fix it is to go to the sky layer and add some Gaussian blur. Try to match it as close as the original image and now it will start looking more natural. Another tip that is super important is selecting the right type of sky for your image. You have a lot of options. Go through them, select the one that not only is a good sky image, but it also should go well with the actual image. That is the main intention. If you select something that just doesn't match the original image, doesn't matter what settings you change, it's still going to look fake. I love the sky replacement feature in Photoshop. It works well with a lot of different images, but it's not perfect yet. It doesn't support reflections. I would like to see Photoshop fixing this in an update, but for now, if you want to add reflections, you will have to do it manually. I've heard that Luminar does support reflections with sky replacement. I haven't tried it yet. We'll give it a try and maybe we'll share my experience in some other video. That's it from this video, guys. I hope you people enjoyed the video. Drop a like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to support my content. And if you want to see any more editing tutorials, let me know in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.